Hey guys, so I'm sure plenty of you have seen some of this stuff already. I usually don't like doing videos on small, tiny bits of info, so I figured I'd merge them all into one slightly larger video. We got some Destiny 2 bits and pieces to talk about, starting with the PC beta. The PC beta is coming on the 28th for those who pre-ordered, and then on the 29th for everyone else until the 31st. I know we all had feedback for the console beta, and Bungie has reported on that feedback. First, we have some fixes like the infinite super and grenade glitches, the warlock glide glitch, and the warlock melee range glitch. All fixed, hopefully, for the PC beta. Next, we have some tweaks to gameplay. First is the fact that it won't take as long to charge your super. Everyone knows it was a huge problem that you barely got to use your super in the beta compared to Destiny 1's insanity. They didn't say how specifically this is being adjusted though, they just say it's a global reduction. In that case, I really hope it's more along the lines of kills giving you more super energy as opposed to the natural timer on the super ticking faster. I think it's better to have kills reward you more. Grenade damage is increased in PvE. The main issue with Destiny 2's abilities in the beta wasn't the fact that the cooldowns were longer or the damage was lower. It was the fact that it was both of those things at the same time. Adjusting one or the other is fine with me. You can't have weak abilities on really long cooldowns. Finally, we have increased power ammo drops in PvE. Again, something that was very much needed. Power ammo will drop from all major enemies, the yellow health bar dudes, which is a very good idea. It makes killing those guys much more of a milestone in a mission or a strike, knowing that you're going to get rewarded for it. With regards to PvP, matchmaking schemes are being adjusted a bit more, although they weren't 100% clear on whether or not this would be applied for the beta or not, but I guess it probably will. The Quick Play playlist will now have less emphasis on skill to shorten matchmaking times. What that actually means is that the skill gap is going to be much wider in your games now. Control's winning point value has been increased from 75 to 100 to allow for slightly longer games and for the ability to have people actually use their supers in a game. That was definitely one of my big issues with Control is that the games were really short and I'm personally a fan of longer matches. Being able to use your super in a less chaotic way will be nice as well. Most of the time you just had to burn your super at the very end of the game just so that you could actually use it. You could never really make a play with it. So that's nice. The trigger for the mercy rule was also extended, although I don't really feel like that was the biggest deal in the world, but that's okay. Competitive matchmaking has a tighter skill gap that Bungie aims for along with good connections and improvements were made to how skill is calculated for better matches. I have to say that I really hope this works out because oftentimes in Destiny 1, it feels like while the averages might have been close to the same, the individual team skills varied wildly. For example, in competitive Overwatch, most of the time your team skill will match the enemies and all of your individual skills will be within 100 to 200 points of each other, which is not that much. So basically, a group of 2,900 to 3,100 players will fight another group of those kind of players. In Destiny, sometimes it feels like the averages of the teams might be the same. Let's say 3,000. On your team, you might have two 4,000 skill players and then four 2,500 skill players on your team, while the other team is much closer together. Everyone's had those kinds of games. So I hope that's a little more balanced. And... I hope that we actually have a reason to play the competitive modes other than it's more competitive. Yay. We might not see that in the beta, but in the actual game, man, wouldn't that be just a novel concept? In other news, Edge Magazine featured a bit of Destiny 2 information and Reddit user Kapawaz gave some footnotes that have been making the rounds around the internet. For example, quote, there are over 80 missions and PvE activities, each is substantial in length, challenge, story, and reward. New quote, there's so much new content that at one point in development they realized they had more content than progression, end quote, about 55 hours worth according to Destructoid. So those first two things are pretty interesting. Content has been a problem for Destiny since it launched back in 2014. 
I think part of it is the amount of content that we've gotten, sure, but I think a bigger problem is that while the game does have a good amount of content, the replayability factor is not as high as it could be. The thing that sticks out to me is that AND. 80 missions AND PvE activities. Reddit user the Dr. Zeus almost a year ago put out a list of every mission, strike, and raid in the game, which came to 77 activities. That does not include stuff like patrol missions, exotic quests, I think part of the Taken War quest line, like killing stuff in patrol, public events, subclass quests, activity playlists themselves, etc. Add all those in, and you're looking at probably 110 to 120 PvE activities. Still though, that's over three years of stuff, and Destiny 2 has over 80 at launch. The factor here is going to be substance and replayability. While seeing a number like over 80 is promising, I'm still going to be playing the wait and see game. We have a note on Nightfalls having a timer varying by strike. 13 minutes was an example given. I do like that Bungie seems interested in making the Nightfall activity actually difficult. I think most people laughed at the 30 minute timer achievement in the book to finish a Nightfall. And considering Nightfall is supposed to be an end game activity, hopefully it'll be getting a little more respect. I don't know if it's a finish it in 13 minutes to get your reward situation or finish it in 13 minutes to get a bonus, but I would be fine with either. So there's your little Destiny 2 news roundup and some thoughts. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next time.